Dr. J in Concert, Biology Songs on Novelty Zithers. This is another JDW Talks. My audience are biology teachers and their students, novelty zither players and collectors. This uh, video is being made on Halloween, Trick or Treat, October 31st, 2020. In fact, I went back over my files to find an old picture taken during Halloween, or maybe it's a young picture. And so I thought maybe this could be the opening uh, picture. It's actually on one of those three-dimensional photographs. Uh, that's why it looks the way it does. But maybe, maybe not. So this is dedicated to all my past students who either enjoyed or and were tortured by these songs during my biology classes at California State University Fullerton, California, that's CSUF, during the 1980s and 1990s. There's a tradition of biologists creating and singing songs about their subject. And this is attempt, an attempt, people say I can't sing, to continue that history. As a bonus for teachers, I put together a songbook for a teacher workshop in 1993 and put it on my Dropbox account. So I picked 12 songs. I actually had a tape case set made from in 1986 that had two dozen uh, uh, songs on it. And there are the songs and there is the instruments, the novel zither instruments accompanying that song. If you've never seen these sorts of novelty zithers, a colleague of mine, Harold Pop Spencer, no longer alive, had a large collection and used to uh, go out uh, for um, um, parties or other events and play the instruments and discuss the history of them. And here are some of the names of the of the uh, instruments. The ukulele on the left will play about nine of the songs. Below it, a moxophone. One of the songs will play a song on the on the duolin harp, and we will also play one uh, on a violin uke. Um, I had a large collection, which I broke up in 2005. I have a full video on the history and resources for novelty zithers that you might want to see. Hi, my name is Joel Weintraub, and this tape is being made in March of 1986 in Fullerton, California. And uh, it's actually a tape in celebration of two different things, uh, the novelty zithers in the United States and a look at a couple of biology songs. Uh, I got started in collecting antique zithers in the early 1970s when I bought a ukulele, which is a funny sort of instrument, a very uh, oblong sort of instrument, rectangular in shape, for only $3 in a garage sale. And from that initial purchase, uh, it led me to discover that the Oscar Schmidt Company in the early 1920s, 1900s, had produced a number of different types of instruments, along with some minor manufacturers in the United States, which were sold door to door. Most of them never were sold in legitimate music stores, and it became interesting to try and find uh, different types of these instruments and learn how to play them. They all were pretty much the same. And uh, uh, then eventually I started to bring them into my classes since I'm a biology teacher, and the students enjoyed that and it's become a part of most of the biology classes that I am teaching. The first instrument I want to play is the what is called the dual and harp, or there's a number of other terms as well. It's an auto harp like device with chords on one side, five chords, and on the other side is a platform in which you depress buttons and the buttons pluck the strings underneath it. The platform is on rollers so you get a, uh, a feeling for a mandolin sound, for instance. You can get that, and the 
chord is on the bottom, a little bit out of tune. The song I want to play is a 1917 song, which is actually an apology for all the other songs, uh, and it's called O Chromosome by Anne Blount. This is found in the Woods Hole Songbook. O Chromosome, O Chromosome, how faithful is thy mission. Thou givest to life variety, not brought by simple vision. From out remote antiquity, thou bringest my heredity. O chromosome, O chromosome, how faithful is thy mission. O chromosome, O chromosome, what burdens dost thou carry? O chromosome, O chromosome, what hardly dares to marry? There's atrophy and cataract. By which one may be blinded And epilepsy and wanderlust And even feeble-minded O chromosome, O chromosome How faithful is thy mission O chromosome, O chromosome How sad is my condition my grandsire's gift for writing well Has gone to some lost polar cell So I give out this doctoral I cannot do much better The next instrument is an instrument called the moxophone. It also has a shape a little bit like an auto harp. Um, it has the chords on the left hand side of the instrument and then it has a, uh, uh, well, a platform in a sense containing a series of, of lead tipped uh, uh, keys. And one can hit the key down and get one tone or keep the key down and get a trill. Uh, Marx was a relative of Karl Marx, who immigrated to the United States and made these instruments out of Boston and I guess out of New Jersey also as part of uh, an association with the Oscar Schmidt Company and then ended up in, in Michigan where the factory was finally closed, the Marx factory, in about 1970. And this is only one of the instruments produced by these people. There should be no men not in studying for your botany It helps to train and spur the brain Unless you haven't got an E Ha ha ha, plants and me Botany is ecstasy Ha ha ha, plants and me Botany is ecstasy It teaches you, does botany, to know the plants and spot and eat and learn just why they live or die. It takes you plant for pot and eat. Ha ha ha, plant and eat. Botany is ecstasy. Ha ha ha, plant and eat. Botany is ecstasy. You learn from reading botany of woolly plants and cottony that grow on earth and what they're worth and why some have spots or not an E. You sketch the plants in botany, you learn to chart and plot an E. Like corn or oats, you take down notes if you know how to jot an E. Ha ha ha, plants and me, botany is ecstasy. Ha ha ha, plants and me, botany.
destiny is ecstasy. Your time, if you're a lot, and he will teach you how and why an EO plant or tree can do or be, and that's the use of botany. Ha ha ha, plants and me, botany is ecstasy. Ha ha ha, plants and me, botany is ecstasy. The next song is uh, out of the uh, Beta 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 Songbook. The University of Michigan presumably has a biology station uh, which specializes in limnology. And I like to sing this song after I uh, do the topic on water in the lower uh, uh, elementary biology classes. There is a mystic fairy realm fairy realm beneath the water surface film surface film where plants and worms and fish associate in food complexes intricate oh the wondrous life aquatic whereby instincts automatic every being seeks its proper place in life, in life. The anaerobes down in the holes, in the holes. The clams and snails up on the shoals, on the shoals. The hand men meet wonders, all unknown to me. Until I took limnology. In Blake Douglas, deepest pools, deepest pools. The summer time is always cool, always cool for the hair. For no storms or winds to who fears, and the overturn comes twice a year. Oh, the wondrous life pelagic where we creatures as by magic are through waters where grenades whirl and dive and dive with salts and gases ionize, ionize and every day some new surprise, some new surprise one of life's mysteries is revealed to me while we're the next instrument is a violin uke. It's a real small instrument, kind of neat. Um, it's also made by the Marx Music Company. Uh, and uh, it's like a ukulele, which I'll be playing uh, in a little while. It is in the key of G. It's a very small instrument. And it's slightly uh, uh, tinnier than the, than the ukulele is. And the music I want to sing is an old, probably dating back to the, well, it's by Anne Ray, going back to 1909, called Evolution. And I have modified some of the verses. How did sea forms change to land forms coming down the years? Adaptation or selection, which of these appears? Did the food allure the species tell us we implore? Or did fate remold the wanderer? For its life on shore, some have searched through every square inch of the land and sea to secure a fair solution of this mystery. Darwin sailed around the ocean, seeing strange landscapes. 
and leaky search told if I go for a fossil ape. Evolution has its problems, a missing link or two. There are folks in this apartment who will make it all clear to you. They will help you in your troubles, urge you on anew. So we will thank our learned professors and wish good luck to you. To many people, the Antheoxus song is the epitome of uh, what the biology song is. Now, this song probably dates back all the way to the early 19th. Uh, tens. Uh, it's given credit to Philip Pope, and it can be played either against the background of It's a Long Way to Tipperary or Ghost Riders in the Sky. A fish like thing appeared among the annelids one day. It hadn't any parapods or CK to display. It hadn't any eyes or jaws or ventral nervous cord, but it had a lot of gill sets and it had a noto cord. It's a long way from empty oxys. It's a long way hey, to us. It's a long way from empty oxys to the mean. It's a long, long way from empty oxoxid, but we all hope came from there. It wasn't much to look at, and it scarce knew how to swim, and Nereus was quite sure that it didn't spring from him. The mullus wouldn't own it, and the arthropods got sore, so the poor thing had to burrow in the sand along the shore. It's a long way from empty oxys. It's a long way hey, to us. It's a long way from empty oxys to the meanest human cut. Wriggled in the sand before a crab could nip its tail. It said gill slits and myotones are all of no avail. I've grown some metaphoral codes and sported oral hood, but all these fine new characters don't do me any good. It's a long way from empty oxes. Go while down in the sand without a bit of pep. Then it stiffened up its noto cord and said, I'll beat them yet. I've got more possibilities within this slender frame than all those proud invertebrates that treat me with such shame. It's a long way from empty oxys. It's a long way hey, to us. It's a long way from empty oxys to 
the meanest human cuss. Goodbye to pins and gill slips. Welcome lungs and hair. It's a long, long way from empty axis, but we all fall pain from there. My noto cord shall grow into a chain of vertebrae. As since my metaphorical pole shall agitate the sea, this tiny dorsal nervous tube shall form a mighty brain, and the vertebrate shall dominate the animal domain. It's a long way from amphioxus. It's a long way to us. It's a long way from empty oxys to the meanest human cut. Goodbye to fins and gill slips. Welcome lungs and hair. It's a long, long way from empty oxys, but we came from. next song is uh, a poem that was written by Pye in 1968, P-Y-E, and I've tried to modify it to a song called Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. The syntax is not as nicely as I would like. Uh, a couple of the verses and some of the words I have made up as well, but the, uh, the basic poem is still here. Doppler 
ref shifts shove bound. Can't the FCC act as referees and quiet this merry-go-round? Oh, Super Echo Ultrasound vibrating through the night. Even though the sound of it makes more us want to fly, we will stay and study it until the first daylight. So let us sing another verse to gain some the next song is by M. Phipps from the Beta 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 songbook called Ode to the Biology Lab by M. Phipps. Laboratory, how I love thee, domicile of endless work. Habitat of slides and sections, sometimes students gone berserk. How I love thy smells and odors, all that pungent, acrid sense. Formalin, carbolic acid, alcohol, and all percents. Salamanders, squirm and slither, sending chivvies up the spine. Bullfrogs croak and jump on ending. Rabbits sit and look benign. Germs galore are found in deep throat. Any species that you wish. Influenza, typhoid, measles serve you up on a petri dish. Microscopic slides of yeast cells show their powers to divide. Illustrations of mitosis make me threaten professor. Laboratory, I still love thee, though thy perfume nauseates. If I die, I die victorious. Joys of science compensate. Um, is a old song by F. Brooks, probably dating back to the early 1920s, called Objective Tests. Teacher, teacher, I've been thinking what an ogre you must be when you put a simple freshman through this torrid third degree. Does planaria have a coelom? Does the tapeworm have a mouth? Are the uropods of the crayfish on the north side or the south? What mysterious process makes the tail of tadpole disappear? Is the gene for epilepsy linked so that for drinking beer? Blue in hope, the mite researcher, can you tell if he did see in the depths of dank dish water tiny amacuales? Who invented evolution, planted phylogenetic trees? Are diseases caused by germ cells? How did Mendel cook those peas? In the K5 plus or minus, bed bugs breathe bubonic plague. CC carries sleeping sickness on the tarsus of its leg. Sister circus lurks in liver, fruit flies furnish food for fish. Tricky trick, is toxic, eat smoked sausage if you wish. Forty cooked up protoplasm, Weissman steam goes on and on. Robin Hook discovered hookworm, what did Schleiden say to Schwann? Socrates had lively students who enjoyed their little jest. They gave hemlock to their teacher for inventing fruitful tests. Fellow students, we must always great tradition emulate. 
Givers of objective quizzes should expect a mortis plate. Now, one thing about biology songs is it appears they're mostly written by students who have nothing better to do, and usually their professor is portrayed in a bad light. Well, I've taken a old 19th century folk song, put it on the style, and have changed some of the verses to uh, counteract that student-teacher interaction. Put teen on the agony, put teen on the style, that's what all the students are doing all the while. And as I look around me, I'm very apt to smile. To see so many students putting on the style. Freshmen in the Cal State pub just cut my class, thinks that his knowledge will come from his glass, oh cramming, cribbing, cussing, and thinking all the while, that there is nothing quite like putting on the style, oh, putting on the agony, putting on the style. That's what all the students are doing all the while. And as I look around me, I'm very apt to smile. To see so many students putting on the style. Pre-Med comes to visit me, tells me that I'm grand. Tells me that his future lies right there in my hands. Oh, what he lacks in knowledge, he makes up with his guile. He should make a lot of money putting on the style. Oh, putting on the agony, putting on the style. That's what all the students are doing all the while. And as I look around me, I'm very apt to smile. To see so many students putting on the style. Young man in my seminar made a big display. Used a great big word, which I can hardly say. Oh, it can't be found in Webster's, and won't be for a while. He's a graduate student putting on the style. Oh, putting on the agony, putting on the style. That's what all the students are doing. From CSUF shouts with all his might, plays the ukulele, his audience in the plight. Oh, sounds just like a rusty nail, but all he sees are smiles. He's your teacher, putting on the style, oh, putting on the agony. more modern song was published in 1972 by W. Taylor in the Journal of Irreproducible Results. It's a real cute song uh, called How Medical History is Made.
you observe some groups of patients and send data to a statistician, then you wait for his analysis, hoping that it will explain some phenomena of nature, which will make your reputation, but it all seems to be due to chance, and the groups are all the same. So you sit there and you think that some non-parametric test will reveal a hidden difference which will someday bear your name. So you test your observations using median probabilities, but it all turns to ticky-tacky, and the groups are all the same. Both your tabling and your graphing can simply be exaggerated, but your conscience and the editor says it all looks the same. So at last, in desperation, you add 50 observations, and you swear now that you've got it, and you're back in the game. But the statistician states succinctly that that damned no hypothesis is again not to be rejected, so it all looks the same. So you fire your statistician and publish in Reader's Digest and the Ladies' Home Journal, and it puts you in the Hall of Fame. The next uh, song is also in the molecular biology area, and it's uh, one of the favorites of classes. It was originally uh, published by a person by the name of M. Bloom in the Journal of Irreproducible Results in 1974, and it was called A Ballad of Watson and Crick, and it was quite apparent also what this one could be uh, played to. Uh, I have added uh, the chorus uh, and uh, uh, the introduction to it. Well, now, friends, just lend an ear, for you're now about to hear the ballad of DNA. It's a song that's newly made, and a process that's displayed within all 50 trillion cells of you. DNA. DNA. Oh, Dr. Watson, oh, Dr. Herkrick, you're so oh, smart, you nearly make me sick. Until you two came on the scene, we knew from beans about the genes. But you've given us the answer oh so slick. It started back in 53 at good old Cambridge. You who, with Wig and Yank, working side by side. What do you want to do today? Let's figure out some DNA. Then Cavendish will be Britannia's pride. 
They had the insight of the ages, for like the devil, the breaks of the ages, published like the devils, the breaks of the ages, they won the Nobel Prize, it's well known and he lucked a whole too. DNA, DNA, it's well known and he lucked a whole too. Oh, Dr. Watson, no oh, doctor, a critic, you thought that and so forth until you heard a click. Those damn nucleic acids were classified as bastards until you made a model that would stick. Let me mention their intention was to draw in three dimensions Bonding angles that didn't seem very plain Using methods quite empirical They built it double helical And together they went spiraling to fame they had the insight of the ages, for like the devil, the breaks of the ages, published like the devil, the luck of the ages, they won the Nobel Prize, it's well known and he lucked the whole two. DNA. DNA, it's well known and he lucked a whole too. Oh, Dr. Watson, no oh, doctor, a critic, you have sired a new scientific lick. Biology's molecular as vitalis wax secular. And those who don't believe are just not chick. They further help the structure cell by pairing anti-parallel, a phosphate, a sugar, and a base. Purines and primidines hold hands to stabilize the genes, and hydrophobic forces know their place. They had the insight of the ages, born like the devil, the breaks of the ages, published like the devil, the luck of the ages, they won the Nobel Prize, it's well known and he lucked a whole too. DNA, DNA, it's well known and he lucked a whole too. Oh, Dr. Watson, no oh, doctor, a critic. Understanding, double stranding is the trick that can help us better focus on gene locus pocus. And maybe next we'll know what makes it tick. There followed lots of action with x-rays and diffraction. While fame came and kisses from old ants. From Stockholm men were calling, Linus Pauling said enthralling. And the heroes of our ballad both got grants. They had the insight of the ages, for like the devil, the breaks of the ages, published like the devil, the luck of the ages, they won the Nobel Prize, it's well known and he lucked a whole too.
The next song is uh, was actually a poem published in Turtok's News in 1969 by a person by the name of George Bokutz. And it's quite apparent what he had in mind uh, that it probably could have been applied to, to music. It's called The Lament of a Field Biologist. My former choice collecting spots are shopping center parking lots the meadow once a buzz would be is still now thanks to DDT Shades of Rachel Carson I sing a worried song whatever will become of me the Glen with trilliums lolled in shade and toadlets hopped and chipmunks played in a watery grave has lain for ye he is drowned by the core of engineers my wild world is sinking fast I sing a worried song whatever will be come of me the marsha the coots and rails where typhoon waved and wagged the tail succumbed to an ignominious fate. It's a clover leaf on the interstate. Nature, he's a dying breath. I sing a worried song, whatever will become of me. A birch dead stream with born a rank with iris blue upon your bank, your poison pools. I now scan my sane hole, yields one false staff and everything I love is gone. I sing a worried song, whatever will be come of me. The fields are being with great precision Transformed into a subdivision The eagle falls, the lily dies And on the road a possum lies No doubt what will become of me I'm not worried anymore Molecular biology And so that ends our little concert. Uh, I might explain that the original tape had over 20 songs. I reorganized the 12 I picked. So in some cases, it didn't quite make sense, the introduction. Most of the songs were played on a ukulele, uh, except for the novelty zithers, the large ones, and each was mentioned at that time. So... I hope you did enjoy that. Uh, some of the science is no longer accurate, obviously, and um, it's still a problem, uh, the lament of the field biologist. I am a field biologist. So remember that I have a full video on the history and resources for novelty zithers that I'm putting online at the same time as I'm putting on uh, this song fest. This is another of my JDW talks on YouTube. I have seven census talks, as some of you know. Uh, I have a certain expertise there uh, with my uh, uh, many volunteers who produce databases on finding people on the census by address. I have five Ellis Island talks about immigration, name change, finding difficult people. And then I have a number of talks on in biology, including birding and optics, and a couple of virtual field trips during this pandemic, food habits of owls and vultures, and uh, a uh, revision of the life of the naturalist Adolphus Heerman. So I hope you have enjoyed it, and uh, uh, take care, stay out of trouble during the pandemic. <laughs>